All right, we are on Facebook through my phone because the link didn't work on this one. So, okay, sorry for the delay. We're going to get started with Bhagavatam class. Uh, first we'll chant Jai Radhamadava. I think you can all hear me. Okay, good. Okay. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihadi Gopi Jana Malaba Iri Badudhavati Gopi Jana Malaba Hiri Vadara Hudi Yasodanandana Baja Jana Ranjana Yasodanandana Raja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Panachari Yamuna Tira Panachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Vihari Gopi Jana Malaba Kiri Bada Uzi Gopi Jana Malaba Kiri Bada Uzi Yasudanana Raja Jana Ranjana Yasudanana Raja Jana Ranjana Yabuna Tira Bada Chaguti Yamuna Tira Bada Chari Jaya Radha Hava Kunya Bihari Jaya Radha Hava Kunya Bihari Jai Om Vishnupad Panamahangsa Paravitakacharya Om Sutera Satashi Shimad His Divine Grace Abhaya Charana Bhaktivedanta Gosami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Prabhupada Hari Hari Gaur All glory is the assembled devotees All glory is the assembled devotees All glory is the assembled devotees All glory is to Shri Guru and Gauranga Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai So today we are reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto Chapter 16 Text 24. Hmm. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, for those of you who have a book in front of them, uh, you can read along. That's 10, 16, 25, if you do have a book. And if you don't have a book, just listen. So, Tat Prajamana Vapusha Vyatitatma Bogast Chakvonamaya Kupitaha Swapanan Abu Jangaha Tashtal Shwasaha Atvasana Randra Vishambarisha Stavdekshanol Mukha Mukoharim Ikshamanaha Tatrajamana Babusha Vyati Tatma Bogas. Of course, I won't let you repeat. 
since I can't hear you. Achatvon maya kupita swaparam bunjangama tasto swasan achavasana randra visha vishambarisha stabdekshanol mukha mukho harimikshamanaha. We'll do this again. Ah, the Prajaman of Abushaviati Tatma Bogas Jotvon Maya Kupita Swapanam Bujanga Tosto Swasan Chavasana Randra Vishambarisha Stav Dekshan Al Mukamuko Harimikshamana Again. That Prajamana Bapushavya Titatma Bogas Jotvon Maya Kupita Swapanam Bujanga Pashto Swasan Javasana Randra Visham Barisha Stavdekshan Al Mukamuko Harimikshamana. Okay, we will continue. Let's make sure everything is all right here. Okay. Uh, Tat of him, Lord Krishna. Prachamana, expanding. Papusha, by the transcendental body. Avyatita, pained. Atma, his own. Vogaha, serpent, body. Hmm. Chaktva, giving him up. Unnamaya, raising high. Kupitaha, angered. <clears throat> Swapanan, his hoods. Bunjanga, the serpent. The stow, stood still. Shwasan, breathing heavily. Shwasana, Randra, his nostrils. Mm. Visha Ambarisha, like two vessels for cooking poison. Mm. Stabda, fixed. Ikshana, his eyes. Unmuka, like firebrands. Mukaha, his face. Harim, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ikshamanaha, observing. So translation, his coils tormented by the expanding body of the Lord, Kaliya released him. In great anger, the serpent then raised his hoods high and stood still, breathing heavily. His nostrils appeared like vessels for cooking poison and the staring eyes in his face like firebrands. Thus the serpent looked at the Lord. So I'll repeat it again. His coils tormented by the expanding body of the Lord, Kaliya released him. In great anger, the serpent then raised his hoods high and stood still, breathing heavily. His nostrils appeared like vessels for cooking poison and his staring eyes in his face like firebrands. Thus the serpent looked at the Lord. So, actually to explain, whoops, don't want to throw off the Facebook people. So explain what is happening right here. We're in the middle of the, the uh, Kaliya pastime and Kaliya has grabbed the Supreme Personality of Godhead with his uh, various hoods and wrapped him and tails or whatever and wrapped him around and Krishna is now expanding his body to release himself from the Kaliya serpent's grasp. So I think most of you know the story, <laughs> but anyway. So uh, one thing that's very interesting here, and this also relates to the Ramayan story. Uh, we know in the story of the Ramayan, uh, there's this nice person named Ravan, and Sita Devi, of course, and Lord Ramchandra. So 
when Ravan went to kidnap Sita Devi, he didn't actually kidnap Sita Devi. He actually kidnapped someone called Maya Sita. Because as the Acharyas comment, that had he touched Sita Devi directly, he would have immediately become immolated. That means he would have been burnt to ashes. There's no question of some materialist touching the Supreme Lord or touching the Supreme Lord's uh, consort. It's just not possible. It's just like, you know, you can't, it's just like uh, fire and paper. You know, paper can't touch fire without getting burnt, without getting destroyed. So uh, it's described that there was the Maya Sita and the Maya Sita was put in place of the real Sita. The real Sita was kept by the fire god. And then after the whole pastime of killing Ravan took place, uh, the real Sita came out when the Maya Sita entered into the fire. Of course, later on, the Maya Sita wanted to get, marry Ram, and she was able to in his next incarnation or his next appearance. So how does this relate to the Kaliya story? Well, this is a very interesting point that's made by uh, Srila Jiva Goswami in his uh, book called the Gopal Champu. Uh, this is a book in which uh, Jiva Goswami elaborates upon the pastimes in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And so Jiva Goswami says that uh, Yoga Maya actually covered the body of Krishna so that Kaliya didn't actually touch the body of Krishna. Amazing. In other words, because Kali was contaminated at that point. So how can a contaminated person touch the transcendental body of Krishna? Like Prabhupada would say, if one is going to do deity worship, one has to be on the platform of Brahman. Of course, that's a play on taking the second initiation, which is called the Brahman initiation. So in other words, if one is going to go on the altar and touch the deity, one has to be qualified. Otherwise, one should not go on the altar and touch the deity. It is an offense. So, uh, in the same way, Kaliya could not actually touch the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he simply touched the covering of Yogamaya. So this is one thing that's happening there. However, it's interesting to note that Kaliya was already a devotee. <clears throat> And there's a story told by uh, Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur, who is relating uh, the story told by, in the Puranas, and also the story told by his father, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that uh, according to the Garga Samhita, in his past life, uh, during the uh, original uh, Manvantara period, which is the Swayam Uva Manvantara, uh, Kaliya uh, committed a mistake, uh, an offense mm -hmm. against the sage. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, he was a sage. He was a sage himself. And he was a, a sage named Vedashira. He was a devotee already. But he was envious. Mm -hmm. uh, So what happened was that he was cursed by another, by another sage uh, to become a snake. The reason he was cursed to become a snake by uh, another sage was because he didn't want to show any hospitality to the other sage. Now this is interesting too. This also relates to the Kaliya story that uh, Kaliya was very much let's say, territorial. And so he didn't want anyone else to go into his lake except for his wives and his children as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So he got very angry when Krishna came in. 
So this sage, who was, whose name was Vedashira in his last life, hmm, uh, didn't allow another sage to come into his ashram or into his cave or wherever he was. And therefore he was cursed because he was envious and territorial. Like you see, this territorial behavior is exhibited not only by uh, human beings, but by animals. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when we're taking a walk, we walk by someone's house, and uh, this person has a dog, and the dog comes out as we approach the boundaries of the territory, of the dog's territory, which the dog is marked so nicely uh, with uh, perfume, I'm not going to mention where the perfume comes from in the dog's body. But the dog actually lifts his leg and he uh, marks different uh, trees in the area. And if you happen to intrude on his area, he gets very angry, starts barking. And uh, usually when I go for a walk, I have to take a stick because I have been attacked by dogs before, especially in Fiji. And uh, the dog actually tore apart my dhoti and I was bleeding. So this is the territorial concept. And human beings are like that too. You know, my home is my castle. And uh, they're very much envious. Not all human beings, of course. Whereas the devotee probably gave the instructions, interestingly enough, to uh, our grahastas when he was asked the question about what is the grahasta or married person's duty in life. Prabhupada said his duty is to invite others to take prasadam before he himself or uh, he and his wife eat. He should call out, if anyone's hungry, please let them come and eat. So in other words, uh, there is this more expanded concept of family life instead of the, uh, the limited concept of family life. So a devotee, of course, you see everyone is his family and not be territorial. So this Kali, who was, he was uh, cursed like this, or the Veda Shira, he was cursed like this to become an envious snake. And of course, he took birth as the first generation of snakes that came from Kadru. Kadru, of course, is the mother of the snakes, and Kashapa and Kadru. And so he represents, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur, cruelty, maliciousness, pride, envy, and crookedness. And he also represents, interestingly enough, someone who tries to pour poison into the hearts of Vaishnavas. Now this is, this is actually quite interesting. Because we have this too. Uh, some people who uh, apparently are Vaishnavas, like Prabhupada said, that, uh, and also Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, he said in the society of Vaishnavas, sometimes there is a imitation Vaishnava, and that's like a Kali Chela. Chela means, of course, like disciple, a disciple of Kali. So, what is the business of Kali? Kali creates dissension and doubts. You know, like sometimes Prabhupada would term uh, Kali Yuga to be the age of quarrel, sometimes the age of iron, sometimes the age of quarrel. So anyone who creates dissension and doubts could be understood as an agent of Kali. And sometimes people even use the philosophy or different accusations against other Vaishnavas to create dissensions or difficulty between the Vaishnavas. And they go on the internet and everything like this. So this is, this is actually the action of someone like Kaliya. Try to understand this. It's very, very dangerous. So, getting on with the discussion. So this is an interesting point. Uh, so Kaliya he, here is attempting to crush Krishna, and Krishna is expanding. And Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, not only is he breathing heavily, but actually fireballs are coming from Kaliya's mouth. And Kaliya is so proud of his heads. This is, of course, the statement of Jiva Goswami. 
and he's angry that Krishna is taking away his pride. Just like someone may be proud of their beauty, someone may be proud of their intelligence, someone may be proud of their birth, Janmaishvarya Shrutasya Shibir, Enaman A Adapuman, as Queen Kunti says, uh, that we should give up this pride in all these different factors, Janma, our good birth, Aishvarya, money, opulence, uh, Shrutasya, uh, our learning, erudition, or Shibir, Shibir of course means bodily beauty. <clears throat> so uh, Krishna comes and he takes away this pride that we have. And of course, this is a famous statement that Krishna makes in the Bhagavatam. Yashaham anugrinami hrishe tadhananshanai. For those who I especially uh, favor, I take away everything. I leave them completely bereft of all their false pride, their friends and relatives sometimes even reject them. And the only shelter they have is my holy names. So this is Krishna's special mercy. So Krishna is actually showing this mercy to Kaliya by removing his bad qualities. Because Kali is, as I mentioned before, a devotee of Krishna. He's not simply just an envious snake. He's a devotee of Krishna, but he had shown envy before. And this is, this is interesting. I was just thinking about this, that if we have this envy towards Krishna or other, or other Vaishnavas, and we're devotees, Krishna may actually put us in the body of a snake too. Just to show us, uh, teach us a lesson. Of course, when Krishna does this to a devotee, it's not karma. Like Kali, Kaliya, sorry. Kaliya becoming a snake, that was not a karmic reaction. Try to understand that. That was directly Krishna's mercy to enable him to become purified. Same thing with Bhard Maharaj. Bhard Maharaj becoming a deer, yes, he meditated on a deer at the time of leaving his body. But his becoming a deer was not a karmic reaction. It was actually direct mercy of Krishna to enable him to become free from his inattention in chanting. So we should be very careful. If we are experiencing any envy towards a Vaishnava, we should be very, very careful. Not, well, the question is, before I get into the more subject matters I've Kalia, what do we do about it if we experience envy towards someone? Well, one is take a long walk and chant the holy names and pray to Krishna. <laughs> That's the first thing you could do. And secondly, you may want to start praising the person or serving the person. Or at least if you can't serve the person, praise the person, think of their good qualities, and that will help you. But you need to chant Hare Krishna first to purify your heart because that is our method. Because if you don't take the simple method of chanting Hare Krishna and Bhakti Yoga, then there's the hard method of becoming a snake. <laughs> So you, it's your choice, <laughs> your choice. Like Prabhupada actually said, uh, there's two ways of learning things. One is by <laughs> experience and one is by hearing. So I prefer the one by hearing. So as far as Kaliya is concerned, uh, there's an interesting statement, this particular pastime, getting on with another, uh, to another point, uh, that Sanatana Goswami analyzes this particular verse in a very interesting way. And he says that Kaliya was not experiencing pain. Now, here in the verse, of course, we read it again. Uh, that uh, his coils tormented by the expanding body of the Lord. So let's let's look at this verse. Vyatita means pained. Okay, that's one of the words in the Sanskrit here. So Sanatana Goswami analyzes the vyatata, uh, meaning that he really wasn't physically pained, but he was pained because 
he was affectionate towards Krishna and Krishna left his embrace. <laughs> this is something like when the, when the gopis, Krishna leaves the gopis and the gopis become pain because of Krishna's separation. So it's very interesting how Sanatana Goswami analyzes this verse. And then he says, in a very interesting way, how the heavy breathing of Kaliya was actually a sattvika bhava. Now, <laughs> let's try to understand what a sattvika bhava is. Sattvika bhava is something experienced by very advanced devotees. Uh, sattvika bhava. I mean, let's talk about bhava. Of course, the word bhava in one sense means existence, and in this particular context, uh, bhava means emotion. So the uh, Sattvika bhavas come from contact of the life airs and the soul with Shuddha Sattva, not the material sattva, material mode of goodness, but the uh, transcendental mode of goodness, Vishuddha Sattva. So, uh, so he explains that Kaliya was actually experiencing one of these bhavas. And even though there was poison and fireballs coming from his mouth, these were just not normal symptoms of a snake. Because if a snake is a pure devotee of the Lord, when they're experiencing uh, sattvika bhavas, then naturally poison will come out as, <laughs> as a symptom of ecstasy. So, in that light, I would like to talk about Sattvika Bhavas. Uh, this is actually quite interesting. And I actually made some notes on Sattvika Bhavas because I, I like Sattvika Bhavas, even though I'm not saying that I experienced any of them. So, the uh, definition given in the uh, Nectar of Instruction, a Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, is that... Uh, the heart that is imbued with bhava arising from a direct or indirect relationship with Krishna is called a sattvika bhava by those who are intelligent. And it's akin, it's described by the acharyas as akin uh, to a ray from the sun of prema, and it softens the hearts with its various tastes. So, in other words, this is what Kaliya is experiencing. I mean, but a specific type of sattvika bhava is described by the acharyas, specifically Srila Rupa Goswami, that uh, the uh, sattvika bhavas, or the bhavas arising from sattva, or goodness, which is a sattvika bhava, are three kinds. Snigna, uh, which means smooth, digna, which means smeared, and ruksha, or rough. Now we're going to describe how uh, this uh, Kaliya serpent was experiencing the Ruksha or rough Sattvika Bhava. Mm. So, just, just very quickly, a Snigna or affectionate Sattvika Bhava, that's, uh, that's the first type. That means affectionate Sattvika Bhava. And those arise from a direct relationship or indirect relationship with Krishna. So, that's not what he was experiencing. Of course, direct and indirect means Mukya and Gona. You don't need to relay to remember those words. Uh, so the digda, which is the second part, second sattvika bhava, uh, is connection. Uh, hmm. They arise from a direct connection with the primary elements of the bhava at play at the scene of their awakening. In other words, it's connected to the original bhava. I don't. I'm not going to get further into this or the. Ruksha or rough Sattvika Bhava, which was experienced by Kaliya, is described here. Mm. When joy and surprise arise from the astonishment of sweetness, awaken in a person who is about to become a devotee but is devoid of rati. The Sattvikas are known as Ruksha or rough. In other words, let's unpack that. So Kaliya had not realized his eternal relationship with Krishna. So it was devoid of the stai bhava, 
Stai Baba means the continuous Baba or emotion that's expressed as uh, Shanta, uh, Ras, or Dasha Ras, or Sakya Ras, or Vatsalya Ras, or Madhurya Ras. So this is this Ruksha Sattvika Bhava is actually experienced by those who have not yet realized their eternal relationship with Krishna. But they're experiencing joy and sweetness. As we see previously in this description, Kaliya was actually appreciating the beauty of Krishna. So that there's actually sweetness arising in the heart of Kaliya. And that's why it's called Ruksha. And just one final description of, not final, actually I have more things to say. Uh, this is also from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. When the heart due to contact with Sattva, Sattvika Baba, or pure and luminous existence, establishes itself in the prana, prana means the life air, in an extraordinary manner, it causes transformations of prana that agitate the body. And that's what Kaliya was experiencing. This stunning uh, and other Babas appear in the body of a devotee. So, let's, at least I'm going to read right now the different uh, Sattvika Babas, and you'll see which ones actually apply to Kali. One is called Stamba, or stupefaction, which is caused by joy, fear, astonishment, sorrow, anger. So this also applies. Stamba, he was experiencing Stamba. Another one is Sveda, perspiration, which occurs due to joy, fear, or anger. So he, I don't know if the snakes perspire, but anyway. <laughs> but if he could perspire, he would have perspired. The next one is uh, Romancha. Romancha, we, we chant about the spiritual master, Romancha Kam Basru Taranga Bajo, every morning, which means when he hears the Kirtan, Mahaprabhu, Kirtan, and Richa Gita, uh, then the hairs stand on the hand. I don't think had Kali had hairs, <laughs> but maybe he was experiencing this, which occurs because of joy, enthusiasm, or fear. And the next one is Swaraveda, alterations of voice. Uh, next one is Vepatu, trembling, unsteadiness of the body caused by terror, anger, or joy, and certainly he was experiencing this too. So you see, he was actually experiencing this as, as the Sattva Gobabas, according to Srila Sanatana Goswami, and Vaivarana uh, Vipatu. Uh, in uh, this wonderful poem, Kabi uh, by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Kabi Habi Bolo Se Dinamar, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is uh, begging. Uh, he said, when or when will I experience these different symptoms of emotion, like this vapor too, or changing of uh, bodily color? Another one is Vaivarnya, which is also mentioned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in that song, which means alteration of complexion from anger or fear or sorrow. So I'm certain that Kaliya was experiencing that. Ashru. Yeah, we also find that in... Uh, the Guru Vashtika prayer, Ashru Taranga Vajo. Uh, shedding of tears, like tears coming out like torrents of rain because of anger or sorrow or joy. Uh, Rosha means anger. And finally, there's Pralaya, which means the loss of consciousness, which certainly Kali was, <laughs> was experiencing or would experience very quickly. A cessation of action and consciousness due to happiness or sorrow. And anub it's anubhavas or indications of falling to the ground and so forth. So, anyway, to summarize, this is what Kaliya was experiencing. Symptoms of transcendental ecstasy. And so we are hearing the description of a great devotee interacting with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in this particular instance and becoming completely purified by his interactions with the Supreme Lord. So, on that happy note, do you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions about anything I said in class? It's a little bit esoteric. 
Krishna Gurudev. Yes, and the lady Khan, do you have a question? Gurudev, you mentioned uh, Kalia, was, uh, Kalia couldn't touch Krishna uh, because he was not pure enough. Uh, but when uh, everything was over, when uh, Nagapatni's... Then he, yes, then, to... when Krishna began to dance on his hoods, then it was different, yes. But, but when, when Kali was trying to harm Krishna, he had this envious attitude. He wasn't quite purified at that point. Uh, because even one can experience these bhavas. Let me, let me go back a little bit. Okay. So one can experience bhava uh, without being a pure devotee. It's a high stage of devotional service. Uh, and like, hmm, we have the example... Uh, Bart Maharaj, who was experiencing Baba, and he wasn't a pure devotee, and he had to take birth as a deer. And the birth as a deer was the final purification that enabled him to become an absolutely pure devotee. So, uh, Kaliya was experiencing Baba's not as a pure devotee, but soon to be pure devotee. And when he became pure devotee, Krishna was dancing on the, his hoods, then uh, that actually course that's pretty good when Krishna puts his lotus feet on your head then you know you become a pure devotee so so any other questions uh, Gurudev one regarding deity worship you mentioned so I have seen here uh, that whenever devotees go mm -hmm. uh, we don't do Dandavat inside uh, yes. but uh, uh, Suppose I've been given service of uh, Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra, but uh, tendencies that go and take uh, touch uh, Gornita's feet and Radha Krishna's, uh, Krishna's feet and then Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra and then we start service. Is it correct or we should not? That's fine, it? yeah. Whatever is the standard there is fine with me. Yeah. I mean, how can but I... That's not the standard, but uh, if... Uh, well, uh, senior devotees do that, so I started doing that. That's fine. I don't. I don't have any. I don't have any trouble with that. That's okay, fine. So that's fine. Okay. Who else has a question about the subject matter of this class? I do, Gurudev. May I? Yes, Jayanti. Yes, ask. It. That was you, Jayanti. Take yourself off of no. mute. Oh, 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 Amala Prema. Okay, Amala Prema. No, no, you're you're already speaking. Go ahead. Okay, good day. Thank you for the class. I have two questions. First is uh, when you speak about Kalia feeling sweetness but still being envious of Krishna. Is that in a way also our position? We do feel some emotions, but still we are not completely pure. That's actually us. Yes, that's true. That is actually true, because uh, we still want to... What does it mean to be envious of Krishna? I mean, obviously, we're not going in front of the deities and just saying, Krishna, you know, I want to be with Radharani instead of you. Obviously, obviously we're not doing that. But being envious of Krishna means uh, we think that we're the controller, we're the proprietor. Ishwaraham, uh, Maham Bogi, Siddhaham, Balaban Sukhi. We're actually using Krishna consciousness for our own enjoyment instead of uh, trying to give Krishna enjoyment. So that's what it means to okay. be envious of Krishna. Yes. So our position is similar. Uh, actually, it's very similar to uh, Kaliya's position. And then Krishna will actually do what's necessary to purify us. So consequently, we should pray Krishna, serve Krishna in order to learn to love him, to develop our love towards him. Well, I think it's good to. Well, I think it's good to serve the devotees, and by serving the devotees, um, then we will give up our envy. I mean, that mahat seva muhurvi muktes. I think the uh, easiest method to give up our envy towards Krishna is to serve Krishna's devotee, because you know, Gopi Bharata Padakamala. Dasa, dasa, dasana, das. That's what we're striving for. Uh, one shouldn't think, oh, I'm a direct servant of Krishna. I'm a servant of a servant of a servant of a servant of the Lord. 
Uh, of course. You know, I remember when Prabhupada was present, many devotees who were direct servants of Prabhupada uh, became very proud and looked down upon the other devotees who weren't like physically serving Prabhupada or directly, let's say directly, everyone's directly serving Prabhupada, but at least the physical presence. So, oh, uh, Jayananda. Okay, second question. The second question, that is, uh, the first question was when we are envious of Krishna, but uh, when somebody feels envy of us, when somebody is envious of us, what is, uh, sometimes I see that among other devotees as well, so what is the best behavior, what is the best, best fact in such cases? Well, the best tact is just to have compassion because by that envy, uh, they're hurting themselves, they're not hurting you. You know, so you you see, you don't own, you should not own their envy. You should feel compassion and compassion for them. That they're actually suffering so much. And uh, at certain, certain times it may mean you stay away from them just out of compassion and pray for them. I think that's the best strategy. Because usually, you know, you, you, you can't cure someone's envy of you, yourself, by telling them that they're envious. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it never works. It just makes them more envious if you tell them. It makes them angrier. Upadesho imorkanam prakopaya nashantaye. The statement is, if one gives a, a, a foolish person good instruction, it just makes them angry. So, of course, they're, they're greeting the deities now in North Carolina, but anyway, we'll continue with this online. So any questions, other questions or comments? I think uh, Jayanti had something. Let Jayanti ask a question. Well, thank you for this, uh, my best. Um, and nowadays, we have uh, also one group of devotee Bhakti Sangha in Discord, and we read uh, together uh, seven cantos uh, where it is described the devotees, uh, Krishna also. When kills de demons person, uh, he gives uh, her mercy. And yeah. uh, before this election, I think Kalia is also demon, but uh, this is very different uh, angle of view for me. And uh, uh, what happened uh, with Kalia after Krishna dance and uh, after uh, with the peer person? Uh, how uh, Amala Prema ask you? Uh, who now have some, uh, mm. how I say, uh, impurity in heart and uh, in this life uh, after uh, this experience with the Krishna purification, what's happened with the, with the, this person? Uh, for example, uh, Kalia, uh, where okay. is the service of Kalia is now? Okay, that's an interesting question and I, that actually involves me directly, not not that I have a direct relationship with Kalia, but <laughs> that that involves a place uh, called Fiji. I don't know if any of you heard of Fiji. Uh, Fiji, Fiji is a uh, group of islands in the South Pacific, and I was just there a few weeks ago. I think about a little over two weeks ago. So Prabhupada said that Krishna sent Kalia to, I think it's called Ramana Dvipa, something like that. I, of course, my pronunciation is probably off, which means Fiji. And Prabhupada said Krishna is living in Fiji. Not Krishna, I'm sorry, Kalia, Krishna too. <laughs> Krishna is also living in Fiji. What's he doing now? He's protecting the devotees. I'll explain that. I'll explain exactly what. <laughs> so, when the devotees first went to uh, Fiji, and they started distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, and particularly they would distribute uh, the uh, Tenth Canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, or the, I'm sorry, the Krishna book that had a picture of Kalia. And actually, uh, when the natives saw the picture, they said, Oh, that's our God. That's the person we've been working The natives, you know, the natives who used to be cannibals there. And they actually describe where this particular entity, Kalia, was living. 
and I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you to go and try to find them. It might be quite dangerous. And so that's the first point. So you may say, what's his service? That was your question. Well, once upon a time in Fiji, in our original temple in Lotoka, uh, we got attacked by some fanatic members of another religion. And we're not going to mention the religion. There are about five young boys who attacked our temple and threw firebombs at the temple. And half of the temple was burnt. And fortunately, the fire department uh, came very quickly and we put out the fire. And so what happened is within a very short time, I think two or three years, all five of those uh, people who had attacked the temple passed away through different means. I mean, devotees didn't do anything, obviously. Uh, one had an automobile accident, another one died this way, another one died that way. So they all passed away. And these are young people. So then one of the uh, chiefs, uh, because Fiji is, uh, or was, controlled by different chieftains. In other words, different areas, there were native chiefs, and the chiefs would actually be in charge of the whole country. Not anymore, now it's more democratic. Uh, so, but at that time, this was years ago, in the 1970s, or I don't know exactly the year, yeah, I think it was 70s or early 80s. At that time, it was early 80s. So at that time, uh, one of the chiefs had a dream and Kalia appeared to him in the dream and Kalia said if you uh, mess with my devotees again I'm going to kill all of you so Kalia is protecting the devotees he's a devotee, he's a pure devotee I mean when you have Krishna dancing on your head you're not just an ordinary rascal at that point <laughs> Yes, Kali will protect you. He's a pure devotee. He's an absolutely because pure devotee. I like snakes. You like snakes? I don't know how, but I like snakes, yes. I think snakes is so, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You may like snakes. Uh, Better than people. Yes, you know? actually, Prophet said that too. Prophet said that you can... Uh, you can tame an animal by mantras, but you can't tame a person. <laughs> so an animal is actually, it's better to relate to an animal than to a person. <laughs> they're, they're, I don't know how predictable they are, but if you're expert... We have a snake in the home. Oh my God. We have now the snake bite a little for my son in the home. Uh, that's nice. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for thank you much very much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. All right. So do we have someone else who wants to ask a question? Jayanti comes from uh, Serbia, in case you don't know. So we have devotees from New Zealand. We have devotees from yeah New Zealand, and let's see where else. And oh yeah yeah. From the Balkan area too. Uh, that is that is the Balkan area, uh, Bosnia. We have a devotee from Bosnia, a devotee from uh, Sweden. That's Somi Rupa, a devotee from Slovenia. Two devotees from Slovenia. Three devotees from Slovenia, and a devotee from uh, another devotee from Sweden. Jainanda, Jainanda, you have a question. So. So all of this seems to be quite far from at least my present experience, and uh, I'm, sometimes I'm wondering, should one make a like deliberate effort to try to understand them, or should, should one just think that, well, that happens sometime like after ten billion lifetimes? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're experiencing yoga, Baba. He's a he's a yogi. I mean, that's a that's a joke. <laughs> well, actually, it's under interesting. We should understand these bhavas because we can we can actually um, experience something 
it's it's described by the acharyas that we can have some basic experiences even before we become pure devotees uh let's see it's called dried up or burnt up ecstasies in the nectar of devotion where if one's attending like an ecstatic bhagavatam class or ecstatic kirtan even if one's not a pure devotee or even if one's not a devotee one can experience certain emotions that are connected with yeah because we're coming in contact with with Vishuddha Sattva just like if you come in contact with you know, I mean so every morning I'm listening to a class that's uh, given by Srila Prabhupada when I'm doing my deity puja and I can say certainly I experience like emotions or when I pick up the Bhagavad Gita here's a Bhagavad Gita whoops disappearing so yeah, I pick up the Bhagavad Gita and I connect with Prabhupada or I look at a picture of Prabhupada. We, we can experience these sattvika bhavas. I mean, maybe, you know, it's not stable or steady uh, and we're not on a very high platform of devotional service, but there's like a, sometimes we describe that as a coming attraction. You know, what's, what's, hap- what's going to happen in the future? So we should be aware of these things. I mean, I, I think all of us, I mean, if, you know, if we're honest, from time to time, we'll experience something that causes tears to come in Krishna consciousness. We'll experience something that causes tears to come to our, from our eyes, Krishna conscious-wise. I mean, sometimes there's, there's this baba rogue, which is material emotions, which we do also experience. I mean, I, I mean, for example... Uh, recently I've given the example when I was coming back from Fiji and you know 30 hours in the airports and the airplanes and everybody was wearing a mask and everybody was thinking of the coronavirus I was experiencing you know the bhava of fear you know don't go near me you know if someone came near me it was just like or if someone coughed it was just like extreme anger towards the person <laughs> so that's bhava rogue or mater- material emotions so we have to be able to distinguish. We do have spiritual emotions. I mean, to say, to say that we don't experience spiritual emotions, I mean, this would be, that would be dishonest. I mean, who has not experienced a nice kirtan or uh, love for the other, some other devotees or love for uh, Prabhupada or your spiritual master? Uh, I, 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 I don't think we can say that we don't experience some spiritual bhavas but it's like a glimpse they're not steady and certainly we're not we don't you know a stai bhava that's a different thing stai bhava means one experiences or understands one's uh, eternal relationship with krishna steady relationship but you know as far as emotions yes you know burnt up dried up ecstasy you know whatever i mean i I, one time I was preaching at, at a devotee festival and some person who had never come in contact with Krishna consciousness walked by and he said, I'm experiencing ecstasy. Because he asked me, what are you burning? He thought we were burning marijuana or something like that. But uh, he experienced ecstasy because by coming in contact with a devotee, you can experience these symptoms of ecstasy. I mean, who can, who can deny it? I don't think anyone here ha- can say that they haven't experienced some happiness or ecstasy from time to time. Otherwise, why would we be here if we hadn't experienced something? It's just dry, you know. Well, I took up Krishna consciousness because the philosophy works for me. You know, sometimes you get people like that. You know, just like, hello, are you there? Where's the soul, you know? <laughs> You know, we we do have emotions. So, anyway, that's a good question. Very, very good question, Jayananda. So we should be aware of these so we can distinguish between material and spiritual emotions. You know, if we we feel great ecstasy and and the ecstasy impels us to serve, then we know it's spiritual. But the certain things, I mean, obviously, I can't say that we all experience Vyabhachari Bhavas or, you know, the the uncontrolled intermittent ecstasies. But certainly uh, 
to a certain extent, when we come in contact, contact with Vishuddha Sattva, then, then there is some coming attraction there. So be aware of it. And it's not that far off. If you just do your yoga nicely, <laughs> if, you, if you can learn as many asanas as Gokul Chandra, then you'll go back to Godhead. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions or comments? I mean, I'm sorry for those who are on Facebook. I'm not taking questions from Facebook because I'd have to look at the Facebook thing and see who, who is chatting on Facebook, and then it would. I mean, there's, there's only a certain amount of attention I can put to the computer and still be able to talk about Krishna. <laughs> you know, I only have one head. I'm not Dasagriva. Uh, so let's say the question oh Amala Parama asks am I fully recuperated uh, until I become Krishna conscious I will never become fully recuperated <laughs> but as far as far as my physical health yes as far as the physical health yes unfortunately for all of you so <laughs> Because now I can torture everybody. So, who else has a question? Hare Krishna, Gurudev, Dandar, Panamagar, Shishila, Prabhupada. Oh, Hare Krishna, good to see you. I just wanted to add a comment on Kaliya. When, uh, before coming to uh, Krishna Conscious, when I was in Fiji as a child, yeah. I remember reading a school book that had um, the Fijian gods, the native gods, and one of the gods was Kaliya, indeed. And when I came to Krishna Conscious, then I um, remembered from back from what I learned from school, they had a god, it was the snake god. Very nice. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us, Sudharma. Sudharma's in Sacramento, which is another country. I don't know where that country is anyway. <laughs> Part of America. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> California. I'm not sure California is part of America. So, who else, who else has a question? I got a question, Gurudeva. Krishna Priya. I'm next door in North Carolina. Yeah, I know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is that um, recently we've been speaking with some devotees that sometimes if one feels themselves like being overcome by some material emotion or disturbance, and they were saying that one way to actually... Um, overcome that also is to relate to um, different pastimes, for instance, let's say in the Ramayana or Mahabharata, and how these different personalities were experiencing different things in their pastimes, and that that's a way to actually be able to take our focus off of ourselves and lamentation and and come to a, a higher platform. Yes, that's very, that. yeah, that's very good. I relate. I mean, these pastimes that we're hearing are actually all relatable to our present situation. Like I mentioned about the Kaliya serpent, if we're feeling envy, then I guess it it would inspire us to be a little fearful that I may be a serpent serpent in my next life. <laughs> but you are or Bart Maharaj. You know, if I'm getting too attached to my dog. Or I'm inattentive. Actually, Bard Maharaj's fault was not that he was taking care of the deer. It was actually appropriate for him to take care of the deer. But the point was that he was neglecting his sadhana. His attachment for Krishna was diminishing and he was neglecting his sadhana. I mean, it's all right if you want to have a pet deer or a pet whatever. But when your sadhana goes down as a result, it's described that he was saying his Gayatri mantra and he was thinking of his deer instead of thinking of Krishna. So one has to be very careful with one's sadhana. Yeah, so these pastimes can help us conquer. Actually, each and every one of these demons represents uh, a particular anartha. You know, in this particular case, we're talking about the anartha of envy, possessiveness. Uh, let's say territorialness. You know, we're all like very territorial. 
It's my house, my computer, my children, my whatever. You know, we have all my car. Uh, anyway, so I and mine. These are two divisions of the uh, material ego, the false ego. Okay, who else has a question? Very good. Thank you, Krishna Priya. So, if no one else has a question, I think Gopal Cohen. That's Gopal. Yeah, I can't see your smile. I can't see your smiling face. You're very fortunate. No, that's so, one. Of, that's one of the requirements to ask a question. All right. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes. Yes. Nobody can ask a question so, unless I can see them. All right. Um, <laughs> mentioned that Kaliya represents uh, certain people who may be aspiring devotees or some type of devotee, but they create dissension amongst the assembly of devotees Yeah. Um, and plant poison in the hearts of aspiring devotees. So when we experience uh, people like that, either in uh, person or on social media <laughs> or in some other way, since we're not Krishna, we can't dance on their heads. <laughs> can't dance on their heads. <laughs> you know that song? Come on, baby, light my fire. Anyway. Anyway. We should light them on fire? No. No. We should pray for them and not interact with them. Because when so you... avoid them, just go... Yes, that's go true. Away from Yes, go away from the place because when you feed a snake, what happens with the snake? Tell me. Uh, it becomes more poisonous. Yeah, you just increase the, the volume of poison. You increase the volume of poison. So you can't, you can't, you know, there's this thing called the serenity prayer. You ever heard of that before? Yes. Serenity yes, prayer means if, if I can change something, you know, without like going crazy then I'll change it. But if I can't, <clears throat> then I just go on with life and don't, you know, don't worry. There's certain things we just can't Are change. Are any tips? Tips? Do you have any tips as to how to determine whether we can or can't? And it's, called, it's called intelligence. It's called intelligence. In most cases, when I, we find people who dedicate their lives creating dissension between devotees is there's they can't be changed they can't be changed unless one's a Mahabhagwa somehow or other but you know even Prabhupada I mean there was one instance of one disciple and I'm not going to mention his name Prabhupada said he became a snake and Prabhupada just rejected him because he was dedicating himself to uh, Let's say criticizing Prabhupada and also criticizing Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur and destroying others' faith in Srila Prabhupada. And to this day, he's still doing the same thing. He's going on the internet and doing the same thing. Trying to create, uh, trying, trying to disturb people's faith. And you, and you see that. I mean, uh, sometimes in the name of preaching, some people will actually attempt to disturb others' faith. We don't want to. Prabhupada, I was just listening to a class this morning, and Prabhupada was asked, you know, what do we do if someone has faith in some other religion? And Prabhupada said, we don't disturb their faith. If they have faith in God and any religion, we're happy. It's not that we're going to try to convert people from Christianity or whatever religion, you know, they're attached to, but help them follow. Prabhupada said a Krishna conscious government will actually ensure that people follow their particular religion, if it happens to be a bona fide religion. So, so you see this, I mean... Question? Yeah. So when we, you know, accidentally, just in the course of being on the internet or being in an assembly of devotees, we hear these uh, offensive things that these people say, it brings us pain. Yes. How do we deal internally with that pain that we feel? Pray, pray to Krishna, that. go away, associate, talk, reveal your mind to someone else. 
who you trust. And there's different methods of, of doing that. Uh, that. That's one reason why I do not join any discussion groups on the internet. Because the nature of the internet, I mean, just like a little advice to all of you, uh, the nature of the internet is that, especially, you know, when it's just texts, because communication is over 90% body language and tone of voice. So when you just have text, it usually devolves to the point of at least ad hominem attacks against each other. So I, I, I deliberately do not join any discussion groups. It, it always goes down, not always, you know, 99% of the time goes down like that and there's offenses being made and name calling and everything like that. And I just, I want to think positively. Even about people who are envious, I want to think positively. Like today, you know, we were trying to think positively about Kalia. He's a devotee. And Sanatana Goswami said he was experiencing pain because of separation from Krishna when he couldn't embrace Krishna anymore. <laughs> so, and, and it was a sattvic of Baba. I mean, it's just, that's a really interesting understanding, but that's Sanatana Goswami's commentary. And uh, So, okay, thank you, Gopal. So anybody, uh, okay, anybody else there? We got some people on Facebook. We still got 18 people. I wasn't able to link Facebook directly with uh, Zoom today. I have to check out what the problem is. So, any other... Hare Krishna. Yeah. I have one more uh, comment. Uh, when um, uh, it says someone in the Bhagavatam that uh, anger makes us lose our pious dignity, was the same applied to Kaliya? Uh, in his particular case, his anger was directed towards Krishna, so it was, it was actually purified. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, if you have to be angry with someone, be angry. Sorry. If you have to be angry with someone, be angry with Krishna. <laughs> At least you're coming in contact with Krishna. You're saying his name over and again. That Krishna. I mean, sometimes sometimes I get angry with Lord Ramchandra for sending Sita Devi away <laughs> to the forest. I understand philosophically, but also sometimes there's a little anger there. You know, why did you have to send her to the forest? Who cares about the stupid washerman? Let the washerman go to hell. <laughs> so, if you have to be angry, be angry at Krishna. Of course, better to love Krishna, but the gopis, they would get angry at Krishna, too. I'm not saying we're on the level of the gopis. <laughs> Sometimes the gopis would get very angry. So, I think we have to end now, unless someone else has a question. Okay. Oh, yeah. Prema, you have a question? Uh, yes, I have a question, Gurudev. Uh, you were speaking about um, the Baba, the Baba stage, and I have a question regarding this. Um, it, it seems so hard and so uh, impossible to achieve for many of us, but at the same time, it is the, it is the goal of the sadhana process. Uh, so my question is, uh, what would you, uh, what would be your advice of one most important thing that can help us to achieve that stage? Uh, well, I'd say associating with advanced devotees, serving advanced devotees, hearing from advanced devotees, and also maybe maybe you, if you really want to achieve Baba, then you can uh, meditate on Bhaktivedanta Thakur's song, Kabi Habi Bolo Se Dinamar. When will that? Because that gives you a goal. The interesting thing is that people always ask me this question, you know, why am I not experiencing ecstasy when I chant? Why is my, <coughs> excuse me, why is my mind wandering when I'm chanting the holy name? It's because you don't have a goal. You don't have a sankalpa. You don't have a reason for chanting. So if you really want to achieve bhava, then, then concert, I, when, is, when will these feelings come? Kabi hubi bola se dindamara. Aparada guche, when uh, when the aparadas or the fences cease, harinami ruche, when I have ruchi for the holy name, 
Kabi Bolo Dene. So when and when will that day be mine? We should be thinking like that. Intense hankering. That lolium, actually that's that's the, another point. Lolium is greed, intense greed. So when we actually have that intense greed for the, at least the symptoms of pure devotional service, that's all right. I mean, why would Bhaktivinoda Thakur write that song, compose that song, unless it was actually applicable for us? His songs are actually meant for application, like the Bhagavatam is meant for application. Kaliya's story is meant for application, not simply just a nice story of what Krishna did, but how do we apply it in our own lives? So we should be hungry. Yes, when am I going to experience this? Why, why is my heart steel framed? When I chant, I'm not feeling anything. I'm just feeling dry as a desert. So, hanker, hanker for it. I'm, why? I want it. I want it. I want it. Actually, that's the price of pure devotional service. Tears and, and hankering. Lolium, intense hankering. Okay. Long Bhagavatam glass and I miss greeting the deities because I'm so sinful. <laughs> so those of, you, those of you who want to see the deities that, uh, that I'm supposed to have greeted about, whoops, about 15 minutes ago, you can go, you can go. well actually maybe I, I'll put them on the screen here. That's, that's true, I can do this. Hold on a second. Give me one second, remain online. And we will give you a darshan of the deities. Yeah, I can do this. Da -da. Whoops. Wow, I'm still on Mayapur TV. What about the deities? Oh my God. Anyway. I'm on the Hillsborough TV channel. I didn't even put the deities on. So I cannot give you a darshan. Wait, let me give you a darshan of the deities in the past. So you can see Radha and Krishna. Hold on one second. Deity fix. Is one of my favorite pictures. We'll show you. All right, one second. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so even even if we can't see a, a live darshan on the deities, then here's a. Radha and Krishna. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> I'm sure after this class is over, because they still have me on Mayapur TV right now. Uh, okay, I guess that's it. Thank you all very much. All glories to His Divine Grace, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Hari Thank you. Jai, all those of you on.